Hi, this is David Williams. I'm here with Krista Moore in the afternoon. She is the third guest mm -hmm. that I've had today for Hope Now 2020. How are you doing today, Krista? I'm terrific, David. Thank you for asking. Uh, uh, it's good to have you. This is um, our first conversation together, a mutual uh, connection uh, that we both know um, made this connection over LinkedIn. And here you go. We've uh, chatted a little bit before the the recording and then now we're just diving in uh, never knowing each other before so this should be interesting yeah, to see. that makes it fun yeah it makes it makes it fun neither one of us know what to expect but with that said give me just a brief intro of who you are and what you do and then at the very end i'll allow you to really open up give your website and that type of stuff at the end of the conversation sure my name is Krista Moore, and um, I founded my company about 17 years ago. I left corporate America um, without a plan and started my own business. And so it's been a it's been a journey. It's been fun, but I like to help businesses and sales leaders kind of get the best out of their company and their employees. And um, that's really me. So I've had uh, a number of different opportunities to, you know, speak in, in large conferences. We've got a team of coaches that do some inside, um, like online learning, and I have my own talk show. That's awesome. Yeah, I just found out about your talk show uh, just moments ago when you were sharing that with me. I wasn't aware that you had that. You said something in there that kind of reminds me of myself, which is also good for the topic that we're talking about today. And that's just, I left corporate America 17 years ago without a plan. Yeah, <laughs> and just Actually, because, that's a great topic. Because <laughs> I have a tendency to do a lot of things without a plan. Sometimes it works out well and other times it doesn't. So that's kind of where we're going to lead off today with, you know, there are times that we're thriving and things are good and, and we're busy and business is rolling in and you're just going left and right and you just can't seem to stop things. It's just like, wow, I'm on cloud nine. Then there are other times that there are things happening in our individual life that may cause us to like, oh, I got to rethink this. I got to do something different. And then sometimes there's things nationally or globally that happen. So what I'd like for you to do especially with your background uh, in coaching and, and helping small business owners and sales leaders, is talk about some of the things that you see happening when times are good and times are, are not going so well, but then some of the advice that you give. And I'm going to jot down some notes along the way and see if I pick up a, a point or two that we can then play off on the second part. So I'm going to turn it over to you to just share some positive energy with us. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds great. So I tell the story about that day that I went into the office not intending on quitting my job. I had kind of a pit in my stomach that day and I knew something was off. And I really wasn't very happy. Um, actually, my marriage was on the rocks. I was traveling a lot, working probably 70 hours a week. And on the outside, I probably looked like, oh, you know, I got it all together. You know, successful working woman, raising a family. And, you know, I was a VP of sales of a large corporation. But on the inside, it just didn't feel so good. Um, so. I, I, my first thought when I, when I tell that story, what it means to me is you kind of got to go with your gut, right? Like something isn't right. Um, something needs to shift or I need to change. And usually our body will kind of have that bubble up inside of us. But my boss did pick the wrong day to tell me to shut up and sit down. So that day <laughs> I left and I never went back, but I did not have a plan. But you know, when I got in the car, David, I remember feeling great. I felt like I was free to be me. I just needed to kind of figure out who me was. And that started my journey of um, self-discovery so that I could move forward, you know, with more meaning and more purpose. Um, that self-discovery with more meaning and more purpose. Let's play off of that for a little bit because, sure. um, I think everybody goes to a point in their life of self-discovery, like who am I and what am I going to do? So uh, talk a little bit about the self-discovery process, because as a coach, I'm sure 
uh, that would be part of what you would go through. Who are you? Who do you want to be? How are you going to get there? I, I would now I'm, I'm not a coach, but yeah. that's what comes to mind when I think of it. So let's talk about somebody going through that self discovery process and learning who they are and getting to through that and to the next level. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of books and Ted talks and a number of different things that you can listen to or subscribe to. And there's this big push for, Hey, you know, being authentic and understanding my purpose and meaning so I could be happy. You know, there's a lot of that going on, but I have to tell you that I asked myself one question and this was, keep in mind, this was 17 years ago. Well, probably more like 18 years ago. And that was, what was I doing when I was 10 years old? And then I started remembering what I loved, what I was great at, kind of what I did for fun, what brought me joy. And I really started to do some research on that innocent age of 10. And it's kind of like where purpose and passion meet. And think about it being before all that social pressure or someone else trying to tell you who you need to be. So I always start any of my coaching relationships with self-discovery. And more recently, this your 10 year old self process is top of mind. I speak about it, write about it. I'm doing retreats called Be 10 Again. And it actually is a way to really take a deep dive and do a little bit of an inventory. What are your strengths? What do you love? What are you great at? What were your dreams? Where were your influences? And from there, we move it, you know, we really do some discovery. It's amazing what things come out of that. That's interesting You're the, the, that you mentioned that 10 year old part, because I've heard as a, a professional photographer that focuses on the corporate world mm -hmm. and been able to do a, a lot of conferences, I've heard a lot of keynotes all around. I've shot around the country. So I've heard keynote speakers from around the country. And that's one of the benefits I get, right? I get, I'm actually being paid to be there and I get that's to right. hear these keynotes for free. But I can honestly say, I don't recall any that ever like went back to that 10 year old part. That's and like <laughs> That's kind of your thing, like, right? <laughs> I'm like, this is so exciting for me. And I need to, I need to add another component to this 10 year old self story for a moment to bring it all together. So, so this was 17 years ago. That was the first time I asked myself that question. But what I did is I did that inventory and I decided, well, gee, what I loved when I was 10 was speaking, but in corporate America, I'm being told to shut up and sit down. And I also love to write. I used to write in my journal every day, but the only writing I did was emails. And so when I was creating my new business, I wanted to make sure that I was starting a company that was playing from my strengths, kind of my God-given talents, and how can I give that back to the world and have impact? So that's kind of the nature of starting K Coaching was I wanted to make sure that I was speaking, writing, and the coaching part came in because I had kind of learned a coach approach to leadership and I saw some really bad leaders. And I knew that I could potentially have impact by helping other leaders be better, talk people differently than maybe I was being spoken to as an employee and, um, you know, just kind of up level that, that leadership skills. That's, um, I think, and maybe it was because you are a woman or a female and I'm a man because at 10, I don't think I had some of, I, I think I was more like 15 when, when things click, but you made a good point. Uh, when I think back to 10, although I wasn't as organized as maybe you say you were, I do remember the lower stress levels, right, at 10 years old versus at 15 beginning to dream about, that was the age that I started dreaming about being a photographer and wanting to be a photographer. And so, but then you have peer pressure and you have all this, you're right, you're, you're in that young adulthood and you're starting to get into all this other stuff. So the 10 year old me would have been a lot less stressed. Yes. <laughs> I think and than you know, the 15 year old, right? We, we use the term kind of 10 metaphorically. I think as the generations get, um, the newer generations might see eight 
you know, as that innocent time, right? Because that social influence comes a little bit, a little bit more quickly now. I have to uh, comment on what you said about not really kind of remembering and so many people don't and we take them through a discovery process that really helps get them there. And um, it's, it's pretty interesting. I, I remember uh, saying to my daughter, my youngest daughter, I'm like, you know, what were you doing when you were 10? Because I couldn't really remember. And she's like, mom, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, you know, how bad was her to pop out of a mom? Was? And she said, that's when Papa died. And then my heart stopped because she and my father were very close and she only knew him on oxygen. He had emphysema and chronic bronchitis her entire life. And he passed away when she was 10. But I need to tell you today, she's a respiratory therapist and she's fabulous at what she does. She gets all kinds of accolades and awards and she'll call me and she's like, mom, I'm saving lives. So she, um, unbeknownst kind of to me, the long way around, she did discover what impressions she had at that young age and what did it mean to her and how can she bring those things back out? She tells me that when she's working with patients that she looks at them like someone else's grandfather. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And that's a, interesting that what she identifies with at 10 years old, right? So different people are going to identify with different things. Good but then point. when you share her story of what she's doing now and the identity she had uh, with the whole respiratory piece and being 10, obviously she gets to live it out you know, yes. as an adult and make a difference in people's lives and be there for them. So uh, it's amazing when you go through that um, and th that discovery process that you've talked about, right? That's, I'm sure you see it all the time. You start people, you start looking back. Cause one of the things that came to my mind mm -hmm. um, that I'm not going to make this a faith based video, but mm -hmm. I want to have all topics, you know, be available when I, when we talk about these things. But for me, um, I was very involved, you know, my parents raised me in church. So I went to youth camp a, right. as a 10 year old, right? And so I can think back those summers of, of youth camp as, as a young uh, Christian, you know, guy. And I, I think I began to be strong in my faith when I was 10 years old. So you've got me got, thinking. I just got chills from that. <laughs> we, we share the same experience. I remember Camp Allegheny, church camp, when I was 10, second bunk on the right in Hemlock Lodge is where I found the Lord. <laughs> you know? So, you know, but I forgot all about that until you start really reflecting and remembering. And there were so many things, even just last year, since I've been kind of reflecting for years now, just last year that I remembered, that have significance to uh, what I'm doing today or what more I need to do to kind of fulfill my life purpose. It's, um, and you have to continue as a coach to continue to do your own self-discovery <laughs> right. you know, and go through the process. And, and so that the fake thing, what's interesting is although I couldn't identify with some of the other things that you said for you about speaking and, and writing at 10 years old, the fake thing, which is still a, a big part it's of my right. life, was solidified during that age range. So I, you know, it's interesting that I've really haven't had any other guest or, or heard any other speakers talk about the 10 year old thing, but you've got me like going through yeah. self discovery. Yeah, as I which said, is here. great. <laughs> and you know, something I learned through all of this and really when I look at my business model and what I do is, as a company, I told you at the beginning that I'm looking to just rebrand more and get away from the company uh, kind of, falling underneath K coaching and kind of hiding there. I'm coming out. <laughs> but uh, a couple of the topics that I want to make sure that I'm sharing, because I think they really can make a difference, is the 10 year old self is one of the of the three of the topics that I'm only going to be speaking and writing and talking about. I think it's important to note, though, that not everybody's 10 year old was pleasant. No, that's and I've heard some really, really, really sad stories. I've interviewed thousands of people all over the world. 
hearing their 10 year old story and then trying to relate it back to who they are today or what's missing. And if you've had a bad memory or 10 years old just was not a good time in your life, it's more about how you overcame. And more than anything, you know, um, because so much has to do with learning and experiencing different things as well as forgiveness is a big uh, component of, you know, kind of getting away from some of the, the past and, and living forward with more meaning and purpose. That's, you know, that's something I didn't think about as well. So there's so many people that did not have the childhood that I was fortunate to have that sounds like you were fortunate yeah. to have. Um, and some people, you know, didn't have that kind of childhood, but you made a good point about overcoming because part of the self discovery process, you know, from what I gather and what I know about coaching and trying to get to the next level is trying to figure out like, where were the roadblocks? What is keeping me back? Yeah, what do I need yeah. to do, right? To get to the next level? How am I gonna get beyond this? And um, so that's some very good points. Yeah, I, I wanna mention something that's important yeah. too on the 10 year old self process is it's kind of phased, right? So first is that discovery and that's where we get clarity. You know, we really gain clarity about who we are and our strengths and what we love and what our dreams were and kind of who we are at our core. And then the next phase is what I call um, confidence. And that's when we do exactly what you said, which is more reflection on my life, <laughs> my highs and lows, the experiences that I've had um, and where I gained my wisdom, my life experiences. So you take who you were before you had all that, and then all the things that happened to you that maybe is unique to you, that maybe demonstrated your superpower, or maybe um, was really meaningful, or you could reflect back and say, this is my proudest moment, and really understanding that. And then the third phase is we say we play connect the dots. And it's kind of like going backwards to move forward but moving forward with more, um, I'd like to also say putting dreams into action, but I use a term called strategic passion an awful lot in my speaking, because you could be passionate about something, but, you, but this is where the business piece of me comes in, but you've got to have a plan, you've got to have a strategy or nothing takes place. Like you could have passion, but without strategy, it's just passion. Right. But if you have strategy without passion, nothing happens. You don't get action or movement. So that third part of the 10 year old self process is really figuring out your passion and your plan to make change, to do something different. That's going to, you know, make you happier, you know, build your relationships. It doesn't have to be, find a new job and start a new career, but it can. Often this is used during transition. It's wanting to move from one phase of your life to the next, regardless of what your age is or your situation. Yeah, because I'm sure that you work with a lot of different people. When you said the word transition, mm -hmm. you know, people may either be in a corporate job looking to transition, or they may have been downsized, right? Laid off and they're like, okay, I've got some severance. I've, I've got to like get some clarity and figure out where I'm headed. Now's the time, right? Yeah. That's, that's why when we're presented with challenging times in our life, that's an opportunity to like reassess, right? To, okay, what, what am I going to do? I've hit this major roadblock. So now's the time to plan, to organize, to think. Uh, and I'm sure there's a, a certain amount of people that see value in, I need to get somebody to help me through this, right? And to... Yeah. Yeah, and just actually taking that personal time, thinking time. Um, and whenever, I, I like to say when you're down, because when I walked out of corporate America, um, there's a little bit more to the story because I doubled down and I left my husband after, after 19 years of marriage. So I had no husband, no job, a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old starting from complete scratch. And I, I, you know, I, I always incorporate that part of the story because 
you can be down like really low point in your life but things are a little more clear down there <laughs> you know you're not getting all the emails you're not getting all the messages you can do more introspection and decide what you want to do different to live differently moving forward and you know often I, I, it requires change and people are afraid of change and so I, i'm one of those i mean i was married um for 19 years very very uh, toxic relationship um but i i stayed with it it's because i'm patient <laughs> but um and same with my relationship with my boss. I was there longer than I needed to be. But I, I mean, I'm adverse to change. And this process, I think, of self-discovery and thinking about when you're 10 kind of gives you a little bit of a nudge to, to go backwards um, and realize that there's this 10-year-old inside of you that kind of just wants to come out and play. The beauty of 10, and there's this probably, you you said something that made me think about it just then, is obviously you can still, a lot of us can still remember 10 years old, but you know, you, you go too far back, you can't, right? You can't remember, plus you won't, like, what were you really thinking of at four? So yeah. 10 is- Well, uh, and when you think about it, David, I, you know, I remember playing in the woods and how much I loved playing in the woods and how friends, how important friends were. And, you know, you can remember your fourth or fifth grade teacher usually and the influence that they had on you or what activities did you enjoy? Were they team sports or individual sports? Um, those kinds of things can really draw some connections. I mean, I love to go hiking in the woods because I basically lived in the woods when I was <laughs> And see, you bring, the more you talk, we could go way longer. I'll, I'll reel us in uh, so that I don't get on more and more topics, but I do want to share a couple things. When you said fourth or fifth grade teacher, I remember my fourth grade teacher getting on me about my handwriting because it was cursive and my handwriting was very sloppy. I remember my fifth grade teacher asking me to be the flag boy. So I was able to like choose a friend so we could go out in front of the elementary school and raise a flag and bring it down. So that was, you know, it's interesting how you say those things. And like you said before, yeah, yeah, it starts. So I can see how it's like, oh, wow, all these things. Because how often is it that we all sit around and think, okay, what was life like when I was 10? <laughs> yeah. And you should, you should attend one of our retreats because it could go for either three days or five days and we really get into oh, I'm it. I'm sure, I'm sure it could because we're, we're uh, less than 30 minutes into this and I could see how it, this conversation could uh, continue on. So what I will do is bring us to some closure so that <laughs> Uh, we don't speak for three hours so that we will actually have people that will watch and listen to what we're, <laughs> we're having to say here. But what final thoughts before at the very end, I have you tell a little bit more about, you know, your website, how to reach you, that type of thing. What final thoughts do you have uh, in this session? You've shared a lot of, excuse me, a lot of great things, but as you reel us in and bring us home and, and close it out, what are some final thoughts that you have for those listening and watching uh, that you want to leave us with? Yeah, I, I definitely want to leave this with, there's no need to go about any of this alone. And how important being proactive and intentional on building those relationships that are going to help you get to where you want to go and that are really important to your happiness and your success and to be intentional and proactive, as I said about that. I use a term called shipbuilding. Um, and you know we teach and, and train a lot around shipbuilding. But so often when we're looking to make a big shift in life or make a change or we're down at the bottom and we're gonna you know, rise up, um, we think we're alone. And it, you'll learn quickly if you reach out to others that know you and love you and have a great conversation with them, ask for their support, ask for their love, ask for their advice, that people will flock around you wanting to see you successful, wanting to see you happy. So I, I learned that early on. You know, when I started my own business from scratch, I reached out to all these relationships for that anybody that I ever knew ever, ever, ever before. And that's why it's so important not to burn any bridges in relationships, but just ask. Just reach out and ask. 
and um, wonderful things will come your way. Uh, great closing advice, uh, asking, you know, your network, your connections. We had a mutual uh, connection that uh, gave us the opportunity to speak for the very first time. So we just had our very first 30 minute conversation together that people get to hear of two people that's never met each other before, you know, having a conversation about a topic about something about how you can change your life and and the given that advice that you gave and being intentional uh, yes. taking action i mean there's just so many good tips that you gave in there and when you mentioned the piece about relationships you know that as humans that's critical uh, friendships business relationships so many things so it sounds like that although you went through a lot of challenges you had those people to reach out to uh, which is awesome. And thanks for closing us out with that. Now what I'm going to do is allow you the opportunity. I know you didn't join on here to do a sales pitch. I, I realize that, but I do want to give you an opportunity to share your website, share any additional information about how to find you on social media, whatever you'd like to do to give a little plug for who okay. you are and what you do, and then we'll officially wrap it up. All right, this is actually really good timing for me because I'm switching my brand, as I said, from K-Coaching to Krista Moore. So follow me. Um, I, I'm gonna be sharing more stories about shipbuilding, about your 10-year-old self, and how you can get on the fast track to your success. So I do that through a variety of ways, um, speaking, workshops, and retreats. And I have my talk show that's live every Wednesday called The Krista Moore Show. And there's a 10 year old story there too, by the way. <laughs> and then um, I just would love for you to follow me and, and I would like to get to know you. So share your stories. If there's something that you've learned or something that you've applied in your life that you learned when you were younger, I just would love to hear about it. Well, thank you, Krista, for joining me today. It's been a pleasure having you. I appreciate all the great advice that you've given to those listening or watching mm -hmm. and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you. See ya. Great to meet you. <laughs>